cock. This is a massive O cock. Hello gamers, welcome back to the Armour Arcade and welcome back to our complete series of Gran Turismo Sport where we've got some interesting new developments to update you on. Mainly, the January update has just dropped, literally just a few days before I'm recording this episode. A couple of new tracks, or rather there's a few new layouts for the Maggiore circuit, which that's my favourite original circuit in the game, so I'm happy about that. There's a brand new circuit altogether, let's welcome back the old favourite that is, the Autodroma Nationale Monza. Always nice to have Monza back in the game. Good to have another track in the game. This game badly needs more cars and tracks, which is what the focus of these uh, this update was. It also adds about 10 to 15 new cars, and it also adds some new events in the Gran Turismo League, which it kind of badly needs. We were going to do the four-wheel drive challenge today, but we'll postpone that till next week to give us a chance to have a look at this new event, the J-Sports Meeting. And if you hadn't guessed already, it's a series for Japanese cars. Here's the main rival cars, Honda Civic, Mazda RX-7, Evo, Skylines, blah, blah, blah. And then at the bottom there, that's one of the new cars added in this patch. It's something of a classic for the Gran Turismo games. And it's actually the car we're going to be checking out today. It is, of course, an absolute legend of street racing, the Toyota Supra. Yes, there it is. Look at it there, sitting in our garage, looking nice and resplendent. But, um... I'd just like to ask you a question. When was the last time you saw a bog standard as it came out of the factory Toyota Supra? So, in lieu of there not being that many kind of varieties of engine customization in this game, let's go over to the other kind of customization that's available in this game, the livery editor. And have a play around in that. Several bad puns later. I think that'll do. Very nice. New paint, new rims, some nice new stickers, a nice number on the side, and my driver name above the noise. It's like I'm a NASCAR driver. I'm happy with that. Let's get down to business, shall we? So we are here at the first round at the Autodrama Lager Maggiore. This is the West Circuit. And uh, this is one of the shorter variants that's been introduced in the new update. And we are on the way. Let's see how our brand new, very colourful, very shiny new Supra gets on with this field of mostly other Supras, to be honest with you. No, it, oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> okay, I should probably tell you that I've turned off traction control! It is a bit drifty! <laughs> this is like an episode of Initial D to start off. It's appropriate given that I'm racing against, in fact, there's an R32 Skyline in front of us. Oh, goodness me. It's gonna be Larry in the back end. See, the thing is, this is actually one of the most powerful cars in this in this race, so in theory, these shouldn't be very close races, unlike, say, for example, if I was using one of those. <laughs> one of those that, <laughs> that R32's actually ran into because it's so slow. But this Super is actually quite heavy. It's actually quite heavy compared to some of the opponents here. And interestingly, if you encounter other Supras in this race, it seems to me that Super... Oh my god, we're three wide into the hairpin, of course, because that sounds like a good idea. But we've made it into a good idea, so there you go. Uh, look, look at the car glistening in the evening sun. Look at that! It's beautiful! Lovely sort of bluey purple tint. It's a bit sideways at 90 miles an hour, because that is just how we roll. But, um, yeah, it seems to me in my test races that I did, it seems to be that the fellow super drivers are the drivers most prone to Max Verstappen syndrome that we talked about in previous episodes i.e. they'll sort of be trundling along and then you'll pass them and they'll suddenly be engulfed with rage and fury and suddenly pretend that they're Ayrton Senna. So, we'll see how that goes. We are coming up behind a Supra now. And, um, well, it's a blue Supra, but it's not as cool as ours. So, uh, that's uh, quite simple. So, we've got to pass him. Well, bit of an understeer there. Whoa, big drift. Big drift off the final corner. We are up to ninth. We are 20 seconds behind the leader, so that's not too bad. Let's go on board. Yeah, it's very nice. We haven't, haven't actually used the uh, onboard cams too much in this series, mostly the bonnet cam, but I do like onboard helmet cam, FNAR. So we just die-bombed an RX-7, not to 8th place. And actually, there is a mode in livery editor where you can change like your fire suit and your helmet. Oh, God. Oh, my God. This is, this is like driving a version of the Toyota 86, which is twice as heavy and twice as powerful. That's literally how it feels like, and oh, dear. This guy in the RX-7 seems to want to play, so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we don't want to play, so we're out of here. Oh, come on, come on, there you go. The weight does mean it feels nice and planted through fast corners, which is quite nice. And coming up towards the hairpin once more. Look at it. I want to run it in third-person camera just to look at how beautiful the paint is on this car. Look at it! May also, may also try and motivate me to be a better driver, because I then I won't crash and want to scratch my nice paint. Maybe that's what the other drivers are doing. Maybe they're all like, we actually painted our cars ourselves, so we're driving so cautiously that we don't want to scratch the paint up. 
And then you pass them, and they're like, alright, fuck it. We're enraged. We are feeling the rage of a nation. There we are, up behind a little gaggle of cars. Oh dear, the Evo's fallen off. As does most AI cars at that corner. I think I like this layout of Maggiore the most. Like, the full version is obviously really nice, but of the shortened versions, this combines my favourite parts of the track, which is basically the, uh, the long downhill banked hairpin, and this section of the track. The other bit of the track I can kind of take or leave, but uh, they're featured in other sort of west, east, central variants, sort of shortened variants, if you will, which I do like. I do appreciate that. Now we're up behind another RX-7 dive bomb into the final corner. Yeah, there we go, drift. Drift. There we go. More drift. There we go. We are now just 10 seconds behind the leader. In fact, there's what looks like three cars in front of us, not four. Well, we are in fifth at the moment. So there's, I think, three cars in front of us at the moment. One, two. Yes, there we go. I knew my maths was not playing up on me. What limited maths ability I do have was not playing up on me there. There we go. Whoa! Whoops! Well, that's not gone well. That is... Ow! I mean, thanks for that. That's really not gone well. Okay, well, we wanted a challenge. We've got one now. Right. It's, it's time to switch to the we're getting serious cam. Because we have just balls that one up. Okay. Another top tip for making races more competitive. Arse up when you're trying to do drifts. <laughs> or when you're, when you're in a mildly powerful car with no traction control on. Alright, so anyway, we're going to... Heads down, boys. We've got to get on with this. Just put ourselves behind the eight ball once again. That's, that, I mean, that shows you. I mean, this... It's got 325 horsepower out of the gate. And I haven't added... Oh, God. Oh, the brakes. There's no brakes. There were some brakes there. Had to kind of mash them for that. But, um... Yeah, this car it has a lot of power at the rear. Where it is kind of weighty, you can really kind of fling the rear end around. Even if you want to or not, as I just found out. So... Uh, through the far oh, the rear end got loose there. Helicopter flying above us. Just trying to distract us, I think. This is what it is. It's like, hey, hey, <laughs> there's a helicopter flying around. Uh, well, obviously, it's for TV cameras. Imagine if you could switch to that camera during the race. Like, you know, in some games where you could switch to, like, a third person chase camera or, like, a static, like, camera at the side of the a tripod camera at the side of the road. I think the driver game has enabled you to do that. I don't know why. I mean, obviously, in film director mode, it made total sense, but while you were driving, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, now behind this blithering idiot in the RX-7 again, Cummings. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I should probably stop trash talking for the duration of this race, because all I've done so far is spin and then spectacularly miss a gear. So, oh, not breaking hard, but we are still, we're still in good position. No need to panic. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Don't panic. We're still in a good, oh, good position. We just have to be careful getting on the gas out of that corner. It's such a slow speed corner. And I thought the fact that I was in second gear more oh, would mean that I would not, oh god, would not uh, break traction so easily. But here's not. This car's talky. No wonder this car is such a legendary drift and street racing car. We are up past the super, uh, one of the uh, several Subaru Impressors in this race. And we are behind, well, the leader is apparently Arturo Vidal, who isn't he like a football player for Chile or something? Oh, here comes this dude in an RX-7. See how many of the AI... I actually would want some of the AI to actually do the Max Verstappen mode, because it makes races more entertaining. Well, he's, he's getting a bit sideways to that corner, and I nearly followed him. Is this actually a drift exhibition? Is this what's happening? Well, if it is, then it would explain why you're so slow. Up over the rumble strip. There we go. Nice. Nice. Hooking in there. And then to the right, to the right. Everything you own in a box. To the wall. Side owl. That's a wall. Okay, nobody saw that. I may have scratched my nice paint a bit. Scratch my paint up. Oh, God! Oh, now I'm getting punted by an RX-7! God, this race is going off! What is going on? Someone has definitely got a case of Max Verstappenitis. Just been punted into a near spin. Right. It's about, this shit is about to get real now. Oh, God. I'm running an RX-7 off the road. Was it the RX-7 that punted me in the first place? If so, then fair game. Oh, 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 oh. And there's the leader up there as well. I think he's in an... Whoa, what the hell? Honda Civic has forgotten what an accelerator is. We're three wide down the front straight. Bloody hellfire, what is going on? We are going to have to go for a brake test into the first corner. Oh, he's back on the inside. Come on, get up, get up. No, ow. What are you doing? Oh, you peanut with, ow. What is going on? We're banging wheels. And he's, no, the RX-7's still here. What is happening? Meanwhile, the leader Vidal is just like, you, I am out of here. You lot keep battling. I am going to fuck off for the hills. Run to the hills. 
Run for your life. That's what he's playing in his car right now. He's playing some Iron Maiden. Except I'm now playing the Trooper. I'm galloping towards him. Come back here. I need to break free of this lot. I want to break free. I want to break free from these idiots who keep punting me off the track. I've got to break free. Oh, this is an impressive race for my karaoke skills as well. Maybe, uh, maybe impressive is not the word to use, but never mind. Right. There he is. Vidal is a mere eight tenths of a second in front of us. Come on. I'll tell you what, I did not think this would lead to a close race in the first round, but AI actually deciding to show up for this episode. I was not factoring in. Oh, go on, though. Go on, though. Looking up the inside. A couple of corners to go. Come on. Up the inside. Hard on the brakes. There we go. We should get it done. Oh, no. That RX-7's... Oh! I've blown up just looking in my mirrors at the RX-7. Bloody hell. The RX-7 really does think he's Max Verstappen. Come on. Oh, my God. Seriously, though. Seriously. Finally. It's good to see the AI actually showing some aggression. We just need to get through this last corner. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Don't drift. No, don't drift. I just, I just need to accelerate in a straight line. That's all I need from you, car. I need you to be an American muscle car. There we go. I think we're going to do it. Oh, some little bit of scratches on a brand new paintwork. It does not matter. We pick up a victory in the Toyota Supra's debut for um, Armbar Arcade or Armbar M Sport as it was back in Dirt 4. We pick up the win in the first round of the J-Sports meeting. And I'll tell you what, that was... That was so intense, I need a sip of tea. In fact, do you know what? I think I need another sip. And, uh... Well, I'll tell you what, my prediction that the Supras would be the, um... The random ace in the pack proved to be completely unfounded. In fact, it was the Cummings in the RX-7, who I think was fifth at one point. And uh, Rossi in the skyline. I mean, that's the weird thing about the AI. They just, it's like as soon as they see you, something snaps in their brain. And they're suddenly like, no, I cannot be beaten by a human. Charge. So, um, I mean, they weren't successful, but it led to a pretty exciting race. Let's move on to round two. Here we go then for round two of the Chase Sports meeting at the legendary Suzuka circuit. And uh, I have actually applied a little bit of self-BOP, some self-balanced performance, if you will on our mighty Supra. I've just knocked the power down from 100% to 95%, which means the horsepower's down from 325 to 309. Not a huge amount, but I figured at Suzuka there's quite a few long straights, so I figured I may as well just clip the wings a little bit on the big advantage this car has. But, oh, but still, still, it dazzles opponents with beautiful paint. Look at it. But uh, anyway, let's hop back inside the car. It's probably the worst view to actually, you know, see the paint scheme of it. And uh, let's get on with the business of winning this race, shall we? Now, I did notice a Supra started on the front row. Or, well, second, because they don't do rows in Gran Turismo, because they do this weird starting formation where everyone is sort of randomly stretched out at the start. <laughs> I, I don't quite know why. Gran Turismo Plus, can you just sort your AI out for the next game and just return to standard starts where the field are all gridded up and actually compressed together at the start? So it, it leads to races not being quite as, like, processional, just passing one car after another, like we've just done there. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, this might be a little bit of a pain. Actually, no. Like I say, fast corners for this car. Whoa, 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 Um, fast corners, okay. Anything less than that. Y yes, I know. I'm well aware. I'm accelerating now. Thank you. Don't have to literally crawl on my anus. To let me know that I didn't do that corner very well. Oh, speaking of which, oh, speaking of people not doing that corner well, someone else just fallen off, and he's in a full drive skyline. So, mate, you've got no excuse, mate. It's wheel spin off the corner there. Tell you what, we're only, we've only made up one position on the opening lap. We do have five laps. And this track is considerably longer than uh, the Maggiore layout we were just running. So no need to panic just yet. Unless I go full Drifty again. Unless I go full Initial D again. Whoa, which this car really wants to. Should say as well, this is on sports medium tyres. So not even sports hard tyres. God knows. Whoa, God knows what this car will be like on hard tyres. I do not want to know. It's one of the few times I don't want to be hard. Anyway, we're drag racing past the skyline. Still got good acceleration. Like I say, I think the torque and the acceleration, it's almost this car's biggest strength and its biggest weakness. Because if you think about it, it's the massive torque that means it, it breaks traction so easily. The oh, up the inside of 130R. Get banged, mate. Get absolutely banged, sir. Um, so yeah, it's, it's both kind of a blessing and a curse. I am both hashtag blessed and, whoa, hashtag cursed. The brakes are not good either. It, um, get, can we get back on the track, please? Thank you. So there we go. We've just about made around a lap of Suzuka. 
Still not very good at this track. I've never been very good at Suzuka in any racing game ever. But, uh, oh dear. Has that guy activated Max Verstappen mode already? He may have peaked too early. Let's hope not. Anyway. I said about making up some positions. We made up like two spots on the opening lap. It's ridiculous. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on. Come on, there we go. Oh, uh, no, there we go. <laughs> Whereas other cars, you can feel when they're settled and you know when to apply the power coming out of a corner. This car, not so much. Not quite so much. And I am so terrible for this section. I may have asked this question already, but does anyone else have a track in racing gaming where they love the track and yet they're just not very good at it? I'm just, I've accepted it, I'm not very good at Suzuka. Like, even my favourite tracks like Bathurst, very tough track. I'm okay there, I'm, I'm competent. But Suzuka, I'm oh, just rubbish. I am now actually turning this into a D1 Grand Prix. In fact, that may well be my goal. Can I, can I overtake someone on the outside sideways? Like, full just drift past them. Whoop. Can I obliterate some more? Oh, no, someone else has fallen off, so it's not just me. Oh, there's a bit of a tra traffic jam up ahead. The, the Civic is doing three miles an hour and the, another Skyline's fallen off. Can anyone who drives a Nissan Skyline, like, stop falling off? This is a word, this is a call out into the paddock. If anyone can actually drive a Nissan Skyline, can you make yourself known? Because there's no one that can do that in this race at the moment. <laughs> Massive wheel spin out of the hairpin. There we go. Look at him there. Look at him there. But uh, there's another another big cluster fruit cake in front of us. We had still 10 seconds behind the leaders, and we got some several big battle packs in front of us. Which again, I appreciate. I appreciate the fact that the AI get a bit aggressive and they're actually bunching up a bit. It means it's not just a case of, oh, just pass that car. A few minutes later. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> a few minutes later, oh, what are you doing? Oh, get out the way. You are all ruining my nice new paint scheme. I paid a lot of money for this. Well, a lot of mileage points for this paint. Now you're all just arsing it up by being blithering fuck nuggets of the highest order. Right, out my way, you absolute wank pheasant. And you. And you. I don't think you've even done anything to me, but fuck you. <laughs> I'm just flipping out now. Oh, someone's drafting us as well. Oh, and now an 86 is going nowhere. And now we're uh, taking a new alternative approach to 130R. Well, if they will put tarmac on the outside of corners, then not penalise us for using them, then why the hell not? Ah, there's a fellow super in front of us. Hello. Please don't, like, hulk out when I pass you, because I never be will. Uh, this is cone. What? Oh, oops. That, that was the one thing this race was missing, was a nice bit of cone demolition. We've now accounted for that. And now this guy in the R R32, Jankowski, is trying to stick with us. See if he can live with this. Oh, the power! The speed! The, that's one thing I don't understand, to be fair, about the AI. You will be in an evenly matched car. In fact, I've actually technically got less horsepower than this guy in the red Supra, and yet I've just breezed past him easily on a straight. It's not a straightaway because we're not in America. But, like, oh my god, well, he's, I mean, he's passed me there because I was a blithering idiot into turn one. But, I mean, that is bizarre. Like, even when you're you're just easily dragging past someone. Can you get out of the way? I've had enough of these fun and frolics. Um, but that is the most bizarre thing to me. When you're, like, you're drag racing someone in a straight line in a car that shouldn't be as powerful and you're just easily breezing past them. You're like, um, are you actually aware of what an accelerator is? Are you actually, you know, is your foot actually on it? Or have you got, like, a small noom trying to work the controls? Is, is, is that what's going on? Or have you got the little aliens from Toy Story trying to work the controls down there? Ugh, is it the throttle pedal? Ah, is that what's happening? I'm, I'm only speculating at this point, because I really should not be out dragging you in an identical car, which I know has less horsepower. God, this, this, this car is not an easy one to drive. Ironically, it may well have been that for once not paying attention to horsepower stats has made for a challenging race, because this is not an easy car to drive. It's got all the power, but not actually that much control compared to some of the cars we've driven in this in this race. We've gone mostly for the no power, lots of handling method so far. And that has led to some challenges, don't get me wrong, especially with the Toyota 86 is. There are multiple variations of that. But uh, this time around, a bit of a challenge. But we are seven seconds down the road from the leaders. H. Le Gaulle, and then a pair of Canadians, Frost and Avery. We've got Team Canada in front of us. So let's go hunt them down for the power of the Madge or something. The power of T. And the, uh, I don't know, London Underground and Isambard Kingdom Brunel and other British things. Very British. And so, oh my god. My god, let's stop sounding like a Brexit campaigner and just get on with this. Anyway, Jankowski is still sticking with us in the R32. He could be this race's bolter. If there is such a thing as rabbits at the front of the field, which are the AI cars that start near the front and just leg it, then maybe, what do we call those in the middle of the pack? Answer that down in the comments below. What do we call rabbits in the midfield? 
The guys who start down in the mid-pack and aren't actually that fast until you appear. And then suddenly they just fly into a fit of rage and suddenly become Nigel Mansell robot edition. Like, seriously, it's it's eerily easy to predict that they're all no, 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 no. Stay under control, car. See you there. Anyway. Let's have a quick look at our lovely, beautiful paint scheme. Look at it. Look at it. I mean it is a bit scratched. We we did dent it a bit earlier. This is an absolute knob cheese decided to break. Do a corner about 0.4 miles an hour. Look at it. I'm just admiring it. Just admiring beauty. The beauty of this paint scheme. It's not the fact it's ruined by the fact it's got massive number 69s on the side of it. The number 69, that is, not... You know, anyway. Let's just go back on board and get on with this. Right, so we've got two laps to go, and the leaders are in front of us, so... This should be fairly straightforward. I mean, I did say that last time, and then look what happened. I went I went full drifty dirt mode. So let's not do that again. And we've got another R32 in front of us. We've got another Supra, and an RX-7 leading the way. Frost has actually taken the lead from Legall in the Supra, so there's actually a nice lead battle going on here. And, um, well, sorry about this, uh, if there's a party going on here, then to quote Arnold Schwarzenegger in a risible film that I can't remember the name of, um, the party pooper. In a minute, give me a sec, <laughs> give me a chance to actually dive on you and ruin the party. Give me a chance to metaphorically poop at the party. Oh, well, <laughs> well, uh, they, <laughs> they cannot do that corner, can they? Well, he, Avery's just fallen off. Frost just fell off in the RX-7. They're now side by side going to the hairpin. Do we make it three wide? Do we make it three wide? Do we make it- Well, no, no. Let's not crash instead of doing any of those things. I'm down in first gear. Like you're always stuck in first gear. Anyway. Well, this is quite an entertaining lead battle. Uh, has Jankowski stuck with us? Um, answered no. There is only one R32 behind us, and that's Avery. Jankowski's Max Verstappen meter has obviously ran out. So, uh... <laughs> Well, he may be he may be recharging it as we speak for one last burst on the final lap, one last climax, one last massive. Uh, I'm I'm going to stop talking now. Oh, the frost has fallen off again. This is the most wayward driving I've ever seen since Dartford High Street on a Saturday night when someone was trying to get picked up from the Flying Boat Pub. I was going to say I better add that the Flying Boat is a. Oh my God! Hello, hello, Avery. He's trying to get in the boot with us. Yes, the paint scheme is very nice. You want to check it out close up again? Do you? Anyway, we're now alongside our fellow Supra. We're now on the outside into 130R. We're, we're, we're now off the track at 130R. We're still... No, we're still side by side with the Supra. We are still side by side with the Supra. And now going to the final corner. Final, oh, he's defending. He's defending. We'll have to slow him behind. We'll have to drive respectfully. What are you doing? When they just randomly break mid-corner, when they absolutely have no reason to whatsoever. That's what gets me. I'm like, really? Breaking to slow down for the corner, fine. And then midway through the corner, I'm like, now I've got to break again. I, I need to scrub off that final 0.1 mile of an hour. No, you haven't. You just haven't, you doofus. Anyway, final lap. It's the final lap. We're up the inside again. Oh, God, big dive bomb there. This is super on super action. Lovely, lovely. We are now to second place, and now, whoa. Frost has somehow not been punished for his multiple attempts to make that RX-7 into a rally car. Well, now I'm behind him, so he is going to be punished for his hubris in short supply, and he's, he's breaking in the middle of a corner. What are you doing? Seriously! Move! Accelerate! You are a race driver, or at least you claim to be. Oh, look at the... This. Ah! Stop! Get, ah! <laughs> I'm losing my mind here with the mediocrity of these drivers. Oh, he's drifting in front of us! Get out of my... Ow! Get out of my way, you fool! This absolute... Oh, God, this absolute cock hemorrhage. I'm dragging out all my insults today. All my most creative insults are getting dragged out today. So, uh, we are in the lead anyway, so... Uh, let's just wrap this thing up. So, let's just send this thing home by falling off the next corner. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we should be doing. But, uh, there's a nice little battle pack there, but uh, we should be able to move away from them. Hopefully. I said hopefully. That means not cocking up this corner. Which we haven't done. Whoa, we have! <coughs> <coughs> We, we didn't fuck up that corner. Everything went fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing went wrong there at all. Anyway, they are still there. They're just sort of hanging there. Just sort of waiting as if to say, Here lads, you know, in a minute he is going to just spin out. He's going to try and pretend he's all fucking initial D up in these grills. And he's just going to completely fuck it up. Well, in actual fact, I'm going to surprise you and swerve you 
by instead forgetting how gear shifts work. But, uh, well, we've only got a couple corners to go. Come on, let's focus now. Let's go back on board. Let's stop admiring our car. They're side by side for third behind us. Frost is desperately trying to give chase. He just cannot stick with the awesome power of the Supra through 130R for the final time. Can we avoid cocking it up? Can we avoid cocking it up? We... Actually, we can. That's the best we've taken that corner on race. Lovely. I'll take that. And then final corner. Corners. Final chicane. Come on. Come on. Yeah, brake. There we go. Yeah, the brake's not the best thing on this car. But in the end, it will not matter. We are coming across the line to take a dominant second victory. Well, not quite a dominant second victory. But a much more comfortable victory than the first race. Here we go. And across the line. Waving the checkered flag. We are home. And we got the hazards on for some reason. I don't know if I went to, like, punch punch the air and not the not the indicator stalk. But uh, I'll tell you what that requires. Celebratory sip of tea. Mmm. Yeah. That is the taste of victory. And, you know, tea. Mmm. So, um, well, that was a lot simpler than the first race. Tell you what, let's move straight on to the final round, shall we? So into the final round of the J-Sports meeting, and it's the Tokyo Expressway Central Outer Loop. So obviously someone heard me making all those jokes about this being a street racer car, and decided to literally make us do a street race in downtown Japan. And um, what's what's also interesting as well is this is possibly the most terrifying layout of the Tokyo Expressway. Except for the other one, well, there's one of the others that's just basically long, 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 long straight for about 12 miles and... Oh, well actually, having said that, these guys are selling it like it's terrifying because they're just going about 3 miles an hour, right? But look at this, at night, flying through the freeways of Tokyo. There's a Supra, I'm dragging up alongside a Skyline. This is just every Fast and Furious fantasy playing out right now. It is lovely. Let's go on board our Supra and try not to crash. Uh, also worth knowing, I have upgraded to soft tyres for this race because a lot of fast corners means potential for a lot of sliding into walls and, you know, off bridges and into office blocks. <laughs> I could literally end up in this one wrong move on this track and you can end up sliding straight into someone's office cabin. Now, literally, it's like, Jenkins, I'm going to have to make you stay late at work tonight. You've got to finish filing that report. And then I just swerve in backwards in flames. Like, oh, hi. Uh, work's cancelled. You can go home now. By the way, can someone get me a fire extinguisher? <laughs> for my ruined car. Which still looks beautiful under the lights. The paint is just beautiful. It's a lot more purple under the lights, I have to say. A lot more, lot more purple showing up. More like it's been covered in purple rain. Purple rain. Yep, anyway. Oh, get out of the way. <laughs> Cantola was very offended by my karaoke there. From a fellow super driver, he was not impressed. Now, how long is the lap here? I think we are coming around to the end of lap one. Whoop. This is like the, well, this is the outer loop, but it's weird that one of the other loops, it, what are you doing? I'm trying to defend from me. Isn't that like trying to, I don't know, defend from Godzilla when you're uh, a beaver making a dam in a river? Is that, that's, that's really what you're trying to do here. I've got an itchy nose as well, so I'm scratching it on the microphone. You don't need to know that. Oh, I've got another blitheringly slow Supra. So much for my prediction that the Supras would be the cars to watch in this series. My Supra was, and always will be due to that pain. But the other Supras in this series, god damn they've been rubbish. Anyway, it is me flying the flag for Supra Honor out here. So we pass an MX-5 Roadster. I cannot see where I'm going. So we come out of the tunnel. Massive battle pack up here. Oh, an 86 just cut us off. Oh, that'll be, yeah, that'll be why everyone's jammed up. Someone thought it'd be a smart idea to put a Suzuki Swift on pole. Some absolute prankster. Some blithering knob cheese decided. <laughs> I'm in a sweary, kind of sweary, insulty mood today. <laughs> I'm coming up with all my most creative swears today. But, um. It's ironic right, because I'm having quite a good day as I record this. But, um. What can I say? Traffic jams make me annoyed. They just do. Oh, God. Ow. That's just scratching my nice paint. Which was. That was all my fault that time. And the sparks, though. Even when crashing, this car looks spectacular. <laughs> Sparking off the walls. But uh, let's try and not repeat that too many times. It's right behind this uh, GTR. And this, is, this is so initial D. This is so Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Um, funnily enough, I mentioned Tokyo Drift. Why is it no one likes Tokyo Drift anymore? Everyone loves the recent Fast and Furious films, which I just think are kind of like... They're basically Transformers films, except the cars don't transform into robots. Like, really? They are that levels of stupid. But no one likes Tokyo Drift, which was the last... Fast and Furious film which was actually kind of street racy and I actually thought it was kind of interesting because they reset the whole 
Like, they, they brought brand new characters, they took it to a new setting. I really like that film. And I don't, I, like, no shame. Like, sorry not sorry, I really like Tokyo Drift. In fact, this will wind up some haters even more. It's probably my favourite Fast and Furious film, ahead of the first one. So yeah, suck it. I would crotch chop right now, but that would involve throwing the controller across the room, and I really don't want to do that. Whilst I'm doing 100 miles an hour in a, uh, a tunnel somewhere in southern Tokyo. Anyway. So we're up to fourth already, lap three or five, but we are ten seconds behind the leader, so we have got a bit of a rabbit situation here. A rabbit has bolted from its hutch, and uh, we need to go and track it down with carrots and stuff. <laughs> anyway, what am I... Where does my brain go sometimes when I'm recording these? You can tell I'm recording these all on the fly, mostly unedited, because some of the bollocks I come out with... I mean, Jesus Christ! Jesus... Oh, I mean, Jesus Christ! Um... Now, where does the track go? It's when you're coming out of tunnels. It's that transition from lights in the tunnel to mostly darkness outside. But when you come out of the tunnel that's brightly lit, you can see nothing. Absolutely bollocal. So, but we are gaining on the two leaders, one of which is a Honda Civic. I don't know who the ultimate leader is, the overall leader. Take us, to, I sound like an alien invader. Take us to your leader. Take me to your leader. Who is he? Ow. Maybe that's not the way to be taken to a leader. My wall banging. Do you remember in the early days of the Grand Turismo series when you just get a Suzuki, a Scudo, Pikes Peak, and just wall ride every race? Especially the ones at the test course. Those were uh, not the days. And meanwhile, we've got some battling behind us. We've got two laps to go. We're coming up behind V Lane in the Honda Civic. Stay in your lane, sir, for I'm about to pass you. You you didn't stay in your lane. You, you not. You not, sir. Thing is with this track, it's so fast and so flowy, but it is so narrow. Given that it's, it is just a regular highway road and not a very wide one either. It is wide enough for two cars! It's wide enough for me to fit my Supra up the inside to get banged, sir. And also, there's a guy in a Subaru who appears to be, uh... Oh, look at that! He's full-on Max Verstappen mode. I think his Max Verstappenometer is in full mode. Full mode? Full... full meter. Full bar. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. At least I hope you do. In which case... Otherwise, you're just watching this video going, How have I stumbled on this stupid chat? What the... What is this bollocks? I was looking for Rhino GT4's channel, and I've... I've just stumbled on this arsehole's channel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the leader, judging by the lights, yep, that's an R32 Skyline, so definitely feeling those uh, initial D vibes up in here. And now we've got to find a way to pass him. Yoma, for that is your name. I believe that's your name anyway, unless I've just massacred the Finnish language, which is quite likely. In which case, sorry to uh, my Finnish fans on this channel. <laughs> Our Finnish fans on this channel, <laughs> of which we have many, clearly. Those two, well, actually, there's two or three cars threatening to stick with us, threatening to make this race interesting, so... We should probably get past this guy, except he's defending quite well, so can you... Would you mind not? Would you mind... Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. I'm now going to indicate. Look, look. Look, I'm trying to indicate to get past you. Can you not? I, I do love the fact that randomly in this game, there are buttons to control the indicators. There we go. Hazard lights. Sorry. <laughs> That's if you barge someone off. You have to do the, have to do the hazard. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> But, uh... Right, we're on to the final lap, then. We are still behind this arse in the R32, and those three are still hanging with us, so... They can mount a late charge here. If they fill their Verstappenometers up enough... They could, uh, flip the switch and go a bit kill-crazy here. Or speed-crazy. But we have still got to find a way past this R32. It's defending annoyingly well. The AI do have their bouts of actually being quite good at racecraft as well, but uh, is there room on the inside here? Is there room on the inside here? Go on, go on, up the in... No! He's actually quite fast on the outside. We are now side by side, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Yes, we're inching forward, yes, there we go! Worth saying that I reversed the BOP change last time, the 20 horsepower has been added back on, because uh, I thought, well, it's a top speed track and I don't really know the track, so may as well add that back on. He's sticking with... Oh god! Oh! Careful mirror driving, AJ. I, I am far too guilty of mirror driving a lot in racing games. And he is sticking with us, so this is going to be a bit of a tense final half a lap here. Oh, he's tailgating the fuck out of us here. Oh, he's going, he's on the inside! No! Oh, goodness me, he stuck the nose in there. He is trying. He is very trying. Very stressful as well. Where's the finish line? I think it's around the next corner, which bounced off the wall. Right, come on, here we go. I think here's the finish line. Is it the finish line? No, it's around the next corner. Oh, he's on the inside! No! 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 We bounced off the wall! Come on! Come on, drag race to the line! 
think he's gonna run out of juice, but he's gonna throw everything at us, but it's not gonna be enough. Oh, baby, that was an exciting final lap. I tell you what, he stalked, he was waiting for his chance, he nearly got it, he nearly pounced. But in the end, we just about to defeat Loma in his Skyline GTR R32 by three tenths of a second. So that was a fr thrilling series, actually, pretty good. Only the second race, well, I mean, the second race wasn't even that boring, but first and third races, my god, good stuff. Very entertaining, all done in one of the most glamorous and most metallic, glittery Toyota Supras of all time. One of the most blingy Toyota Supras around, well, certainly in Gran Turismo Sport, anyway. But, um, well, that'll bring to an end this episode. Uh, comment down below your names for the random AI drivers that only suddenly get good when you pass them. Uh, so, uh, comment down below those, and, uh, comment down below your favourite Fast and Furious film, or your favourite street racing film. It, films like Initial D also count, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, mine's Tokyo Drift. That'll be a controversial choice, I know. Go and argue how I'm wrong down in the comments below. And in the meantime, subscribe if you're new in here, give this video a big old thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, which I hope you have, and we'll see you guys next time in the Armour Arcade. Okay.